So welcome back to my channel. So medyo mabilisan lang tong gagawin natin na um, video. Actually this is just um recorded okay sa screen ng laptop ko. So kumbaga para lang um masalo natin yung mga problema ng karamihan regarding with the sample presentation na hinihingi nila because of napakadami nagse-send through email regarding dun sa nanghingi ng file and this is sabi na natin na um, the thing na gagawin ko na lang kasi ang hirap is isahin ng mga yon para i-send and um ang gagawin na lang natin is um, this will serve as a guide. Okay, by the way, this is an example of PowerPoint presentation made by my students regarding dun sa qualitative research nila. Once again, I'm just clarifying this one na ito ay sample ng research which is under qualitative research. So, sa paggawa ng qualitative research PowerPoint, masasabi natin na even that is quantitative, hindi siya dapat ganun ka verbose. Hindi dapat siya ganun ka, um, sabi na natin na sobrang daming content or napaka-wordy. So, it should be direct to the point, very concise, and as much as possible, huwag kang gagamit ng paragraph or just use bullet type, okay? So, on the first part, kung makikita natin dito, so, ayan, I'm using the cursor. So, kailan mong i-indicate dito sa first part, First part ng inyong um, PowerPoint presentation, you should indicate there automatically yung inyong title. So, on our case kasi, I let my students um, indicate the title using capitalized letters. Okay, so kumbaga naka-uppercase silang lahat. Okay, so for the formality. And ilalagay mo siya dito, okay, and using the font size of NASA 48 and above dapat yung font na gagamitin niyo. And then aside from that, um, on the lower part or any part ng PowerPoint presentation ninyo, kasi kumbaga nasa sa inyo naman yun eh. Okay, depende kung gagawa ka na sarili nyong PowerPoint template. Basta hindi lang siya ganun ka-colorful. So, on the lower part or sabi na natin na after the title, you should indicate there your members. So, on my case, pinagawa ko doon is that um, gumamit lang sila ng initial ng pangalan nila and of course, highlight their surname. And of course, you should indicate as well the subject. Okay, practical research 1 for grade 11, practical research 2 for grade 12. And aside from that, you should indicate here your, um, sabi na natin, a name of your school. So, on my case, for the confidentiality, so medyo tinakpan ko, or tinakpan ko talaga yung pangalan ng eskwelahan na kung saan ang galing tong PowerPoint presentation na to. So, aside from that, minsan ginagawa rin siya na um, gumagamit ng header para i-present yung pangalan ng school ninyo. So, pwede nyo gawin nyo na on the upper part bago dito lumabas yung title. So, dito sa part na to, pwede nyo ilagay dyan yung pinaka um, header ng inyong school or inyong document na ginagamit. Okay? So, once again, this is the front page wherein indicated yung title ng research ninyo. On the next page, ang dapat na lalabas dyan is si chapter 1. So, since ang qualitative research ay hindi siya nag address ng chapter 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5. So, ilalagay na lang natin dito is yung pinaka-title ng bawat element or bawat chapter. So, right here, I indicated here the background of the study. So, isa dun sa mga research, I mean sa sample ng video ko, kung paano ginagawa yung um, introduction. So, meron dong 6 questions wherein pwede mong gamitin yon. Okay, as a guide. So, mapapansin ninyo, hindi ako gumamit dito ng paragraph. Okay. And eto, gumamit lang ako dito ng bullet type. So, ibig sabihin nun, napaka-concise niya, very direct to the point. Hindi kailangan dito ng sobrang wordy kasi gagamitin nyo nga lang si PowerPoint presentation as your guide, okay, sa pagpe-present. And sa pagpe-present, pwede nyo siyang basahin yung PowerPoint presentation niyo But then, um, of course, you have to explain it. So, ano ba yung mga content ng background of the study natin? So, syempre, the rationale ipapaliwanag mo. Okay, yung setting, yung objectives, yung pinaka main purpose ninyo, the degree of seriousness. Okay, basta yung pinaka content, kumbaga, ang um, pipili ka lang ng mga keywords or mga sabi na natin na part ng introduction mo wherein um, it plays a vital role regarding dun sa introduction mo. And then, kukuha ka lang ng um, pinch of it, okay, then paste it in your um, PowerPoint presentation and then kumbaga, ito yung may mga weight. May mabigat. So, ano ba yung mga yun? Katulad ng binanggit ko kanina, it could be the rational, the main problem, the main focus, the um, local site, kung saan siya kinandak or ikakandak. And then, aside from that, your objective, yung pinaka-general purpose. So, yun yung mga bagay na pwede natin gawin or indicate with the background of the study. And on the next page, on the next slide, so, pwede mo ring ilagay doon 
Ito mga to. Okay, so it could be the significance of the study wherein the following will benefit the study. So ilalagay niyo doon si students, si teachers, future researchers, and depende kasi siya kung sino yung mga um, magbe-benefit ng research niyo. By the way, on this slide, ah, pwede niyo siyang ilagay on the last part ng chapter 1 or second to the last part ng chapter 1. So siguro sa part na ito, medyo nagkamali lang sila ng pagkakapwesto, but then commonly pagkatapos ito ng statement of the problem, nilalagay si significance of the study. So sa paglagay nito, huwag niyong ilalagay kung anong saktong benefit na makukuha nila kasi mauubusan kayo ng sasabihin in your presentation. So you just um, have to indicate there kung sino yung pinaka main um, focus okay, na magbe-benefit Regarding with your research. So, gagamit lang kayo dito ng bullet type. Okay? On the next page, ilalagay mo na dito si general problem. So, this study aims to understand the experiences of grade 9 STE honor students with poor eyesight during literature class. So, ilalagay nyo dyan yung pinaka-general problem ninyo on one slide. Okay? So, as much as possible, one slide lang siya. Huwag nyo ipagkakasya dito yung susunod na part ng statement of the problem mo, which is the specific question. So, right here, pwede mong ilagay dito before the three questions or yung specific questions na ilalagay nyo dito, pwede mong indicate dito yung pinaka, um, tawag dito statement wherein this study um, sought the following um, questions. Okay? So, pwede mong ilagay yun dito and then after nun, tsaka mo isa-isahin yung mga question. And aside from that, pwede mo rin gawin na per question, per slide. Pwede ganun. Let's say for example, um, what are the struggle of ST achievers with poor eyesight during literature class? Pwede mong gawin to in just one slide. Kumbaga kasi kailangan mabigyan ng emphasis yung pinakabawat specific question na gagamitin natin for your research. Or on my case, kasi pinagsama-sama na namin siya in just one slide. Wala namang problema dun eh. But then, of course, always consult your research advisor. Lagi mong tatanungin regarding with the format na gagawin ninyo. And for the next slide, so ilalagay nyo na dyan si scope and delimitation. So once again, do not indicate, di ba, ang scope and delimitation natin ay nahati siya sa dalawang paragraph. So, pwede siya kasing paghiwalayin. But then, in this case, ginawa na naman siya, sinamarize na naman siya into um, various of bullet types. Okay? So, depende na rin yun. Basta nasa pagpapaliwanag lang yun. Katulad nga nung lagi kong sinasabi sa inyo, eto ay magiging guide nyo lang. And then, ang pinaka-importante kasi dito is kung paano nyo siya ipapaliwanag. So, hindi ko na ipapaliwanag kung anong scope and limitation dahil, of course, alam nyo na kung anong pagkakaiba ng dalawang yan. Okay. Next, um, the next slide is that research design. Kung mapapansin ninyo ay hindi ko in-indicate, I did not indicate here, okay, or attach here my chapter 2 or the RRL. So, si RRL katulad ng discussion natin with the different um, videos na in-upload ko, si RRL hindi talaga siya nilalagay sa PowerPoint presentation. Kasi pinepresent si RRL or gagradean kayo kay um, chapter 2 or si RRL if magpapaliwanag kayo, okay, ng isang um, part ng research ninyo and then gagamit kayo ng citation. So, dun kayo um, gagradean or yun yung pagbabasehan ng magiging panelist ninyo para magradean kayo sa chapter 2. So, wag na wag mo siyang ilalagay sa PowerPoint presentation kasi your citation must be memorized and must be part of the explanation of every element ng bawat chapter ng research ninyo. So, this is considered to be the chapter 3 of your Research, okay? So, nakalagay dito research design. So, nilagay lang namin dito specifically kung ano yung research approach and research design na gagamitin namin. So, technically, qualitative research, okay, naka-indicate siya dito. And aside from that, specifically, um, in nature, gumamit sila ng phenomenological research, okay, or approach na ginagamit. So, on the next slide, we have there the respondents. So, respondents, ilalagay mo dyan kung paano mo kinuha si respondents. So, by the use of non-probability sampling. Okay? So, pwede mong ilagay doon. And aside from that, we must be very specific with um, purposive sampling. So, yun yung ginamit ng um, estudyante ko regarding with their research. And aside from that, you can indicate also here yung specific na respondent na ginamitin nyo wherein hindi lang nila na ilagay dito. But then, on your case, pwede mo siyang ilagay. So, let's say, for example, um, pwede mo ilagay dito yung STE students. Okay? So, ilalagay mo siya dito. And of course, you can provide here um, 
a glimpse of your criteria kung paano mo sila kinuha. Basta gagamit lang kayo dito ng bullet type lagi. Next one is, yan. Ako kasi, sinasabi ko sa mga estudyante ko na you should indicate um, some pictures. Pwede kayo maglagay ng mga pictures doon. But then, since eto ay research and based dun sa letter na pinapagawa ko sa kanila, dapat nakahide yung mukha. Kung mapapansin natin, nakablurred yung mga mukha. Okay? Nung mga respondents sila. Kasi importante sa amin confidentiality ng mga information. Of, of course, the anonymity ng mga estudyante or mga respondents sa um, pinili nila. And once again, ito dapat ay um, pictures, okay? So, sa respondents ko, pinapalagyan ko talaga ng picture yan para, kumbaga, um, maging appealing din siya sa harapan ng mga panelists. And kumbaga, makita nila na um, ito talaga yung ginawa ng mga bata. Okay? Next, we have here the instrument. So, si instrument indicator automatically kung anong instrument ang ginamit niyo. So, with this one... Um, they used localized interview protocol. And then after nun, so since nakalagay na siya dyan, ipapaliwanag mo na siya. And then naglagay rin sila dito ng sample picture kasi required silang gumamit doon ng video um, camera to record the interview, the whole process of interview na gagamitin nila for transcription and data analysis. Next part is the procedure. So pwede naman kayo dito gumamit ng um, schematic type of presentation. Let's say, for example, gagamit kayo dyan ng mga diagram. Walang problema dun. But then, in our case, since ito ay qualitative research, gumamit kami lang dito ng mga words. Okay? So, lagyan nyo lang siya dito ng bullet types, yung pagkakasunod-sunod ng mismong um, pagkakandak ninyo ng research. So, let's say, for example, they started with um, approval letter, pagpapapirma, and then after that, they made an interview, and then after the interview, they made a transcription ng in-interview nila, and then aside from that, kinode nila, and then after nila mag-code, inanalyze sila so that makabuo sila ng conclusion. Kumbaga, ito yung pinaka-proseso ng kabuuan ng research nila. Okay, so bullet type lang din, but then, um, technically kasi dapat ito ay hanggang, ano lang siya eh, transcription, okay, and then coding, and then analysis. Okay? So, ayun, another thing is that, nagpakita sila dito ng picture wherein nag-interview sila. So next, this is part of the chapter 4, Presentation, Analysis, Interpretation of Data. So right here, dapat ang mauuna dito ay eto muna, si table. So sa pagpe-present nyo ng ganto sa qualitative research, mamili lang kayo ng isang tanong. Isang tanong lang muna ipe-present ninyo, okay? And then wag nyo na siyang lahatin kasi kumbaga based on our instruction, ha, nung nagkaroon muna kami ng orientation before the day of their um, colloquium, um, Sinabi namin doon na kailangan isa lang, okay, ang tanong na kukunin natin doon sa interview protocol na ginawa nila. So, eto ay question number four. So, mapapansin niyo this is part of the coding wherein, ang part na to, okay, these are considered to be the categories, okay, the perspective, recognition, and then under that, eto yung mga code na kung saan nabuo or nakuha nila para mabuo si perspective, para mabuo si recognition memory. So, sa part na ito, ito yung mga masasabi natin na saturated na sagot based on question na ipepresent natin. So, which is number four. And then after that, we have there the analysis of data. So, si analysis of data, since question number four ang napili mo for the presentation of data, so dapat sa analysis of data, um, question number four din ang gagamitin mo. So, ilalagay mo lang dito yung pinakatanong and then yung emergent codes na lumabas, which is perspective, recognition, so ayon. And then aside from that, you have to provide there the interpretation. So, ilalagay mo lang siya dito by just sabihin na natin na stating the direct answer Okay, the direct interpretation based on um, the analysis ng coding na ginawa ninyo. So, pwede kayong gumamit dito ng bullet type pa rin. Basta wag lang kayo maglalagay ng paragraph. As much as possible, the direct um, answer, the direct interpretation, the pinaka gist ng interpretation na ginawa ninyo, yun lang yung ilagay nyo dito. So, mapapansin ninyo sa sample ng gawa ng mga bata. So, this is a direct example okay, ng interpretation based on question number 4. So, this is interpretation for um, the question number four. Na ulit na naman. And this is for the part of chapter five, okay? The summary of findings, conclusion, and recommendation. So, this is the summary of findings. Once again, isa-isayin mo lang siya. So, you can use bullet type sa pagkakasunod-sunod ng pinaka-content ng summary of findings mo. So, do not use paragraph. 
Okay? And then after that, we have there the conclusion. So dito medyo tinamad na sila. But then, um, you have to provide there the direct conclusion. So it could be a paragraph. Wala lang problema kasi importante si conclusion eh. So pag nag-present kayo, dapat ito yung mabibigyan nyo ng highlight sa lahat. Okay? Where in conclusion, will answer the general question kanina. So dito, ilalagay mo yung pinaka, um, tano, let's say for example, what are the experiences of ganto ni ganto sa ganyan? So this is um the part wherein it will reveal the answer from your general question. And lastly, ilalagay mo dyan si recommendation. So, parang katulad lang din siya ng significance of the study wherein sin, ano yung mga part na kung saan kailangan mabigyan ng recommendation. So, gagawan mo siya ng bullet type. So, isa is same din siya. And then, yung isa dyan, na naka-assign dyan to explain. So, syempre, siya na ang bahalang magpaliwanag one by one. And lastly, okay, so that's it. Actually, um, may part pa dito wherein kailangan ninyong maglagay ng um, references. So, the last slide dapat dito ang nakalagay dyan is the references. So, references nung um, research ninyo, sa kabuan ng research ninyo, kailangan nyo indicate yun. Importante na maglagay kayo ng ganun doon, okay? So, you can actually attach there the word thank you, but then sa akin kasi hindi ko pinapalagay yun, okay? But then sa inyo, okay, it's up to you kung maglalagay kayo ng thank you, wala naman problema doon. But then for me kasi, since nabanggit naman siya or babanggitin mo siya pagkatapos mong mag-present, Kumbaga, maglilid ka doon na magpapaliwanag ka na na pwede na sila magtanong. Siyempre, babanggitin mo yung word na thank you. And let's end our video for this um, session. So, I hope na may nakuha kayo, may natutuhan kayo. Although, medyo mabilis na lang tong video na to. And this is the first time na nag-record ako or gumawa ako ng gandong klase ng video where in-screen recording ang ginawa natin yan. And I don't know kung ano yung magiging quality ng bosses dito kasi I am using my laptop lang to record the voice and of course this is the first time nga na ginamit ko siya and with that once again thank you for watching this video and hope that you've learned something new so please do not forget to subscribe this channel um like the, hit the like button ano pa yan nahihirapan na ako hit the like button and then comment so on so forth so basta yun na lang yun and once again thank you for watching